Hey, Alec, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? I'm all right, you know, stuck at home like everybody. Um, you holding up, you staying safe? Yeah, same here, same, working out of my backyard. Ah, well, it's good to see you again. Last time I was up there visiting, but I think it'll be maybe a little while before we can get back up there. So, but thanks for coming and joining us and telling us about uh, about how you're using MarkLogic uh, for the MBSE project at Boeing. Um, why don't you start by just sort of telling us a little bit about yourself and what your role is at Boeing, uh, what you do there. Sure. Uh, so my name is Alec Chabillo. Um, I work for a organization called Airplane Level Engineering Integration. Essentially, what we do is we model the business processes for that engineers use for their day-to-day -day work building airplanes. Uh, personally, what I specialize in more is um, is uh, taking stakeholder needs and translating them into um, in, uh, into IT requirements. Uh, uh, I have degrees in both computer science and mechanical engineering, which allows me to kind of you know bridge the gap and speak both dialects. Mm, that's great. So you're working on MBSC, and that stands for Model Based Systems Engineering. Is that right? Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about what that is? Yeah. So uh, Model Based Systems Engineering is basically just an extension of systems engineering in general, but it's getting more use for uh, for uh, just the overall life cycle process of um, building products such as airplanes, you know, uh, conceiving, planning, building, delivering, maintaining, and retiring, right? The entire life cycle from start to finish. Um, and what we are doing is, uh, you know, providing providing the end to end traceability for uh, for, uh, for for all the way from user needs to, to uh, and requirements to the uh, product certification and performance, right? That's where uh, the model base really uh, kicks in is that we uh, uh, provide the models that mimic the entire process from start to finish. Wow, so th these must be fairly complicated models then. These airplanes are not simple things, right? Yes, that's right. There's uh, there's um, a lot of moving parts. There's um, a very high customizability. Also, you know, every single airplane that leaves our factory is completely different from the previous one. Uh, we're talking about you know magnitude of hundreds of thousands of airplanes uh, of parts per uh, per unit that leaves the factory, and. Uh, and also, uh, it's you know it's the rate at which we build them. We uh, you know we build uh, fifty airplanes per per month for uh, for some of our models. So like if you take shipbuilding, we have much bigger uh, much bigger products, but they only you know put out one or two per year uh, as opposed to uh, uh, as opposed to you know uh, our rates. Yeah, so that's a pretty complicated thing. You're trying to mass produce fairly customized product. Um, and I guess these models help uh, make sure that you don't make a mistake on the on the factory floor, right? Get the figure out what the problem might be in the model, or or what the the dependencies might be in the model before you get to the actual building. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you know, uh, we want to make sure that all the defects are taken care of uh, before we start ordering parts from suppliers and uh, and building the product. When you know, mistakes then are much more costly. So. Uh, the fact that all the data is interrelated, we can we can uh, we can find impacts of changes mu uh, much more quickly and uh, efficiently. So the, these models contain all of the different components and all of the different in in the in the various products that you're talking about um, and how they relate to each other. Is that right? Yeah. So essentially, each model will be uh, responsible for uh, it's it's more about uh, levels of abstractions and the different domains, right? So there you could have one set of models that defines uh, the the product breakdown of how it's built. The other one that uh, breaks down like the factory that's going to build this product. Wow. And then models for requirements. You have models for uh, you know all sorts of things, and uh, and and everything has to be. Perfectly connected. If we change one part uh, in in the product definition, we have to make sure that we're able to build it using the tooling that we have. Right. Wow. So there's multiple mod requirements models and physical models and logical models, and all of them are related to each other. And I guess you have to be able to to query and analyze those models if you want to make a change over here. What's the impact that it has elsewhere? Is that is that part of the idea? Exactly. Yeah. So impact analysis, I would say, is our uh, key use case. Um, it's basically, you know, finding some of those uh, some of those uh, 
impacts are really deeply nested that are far away from where uh, from where the change has been made. Um, so that's where you know graph databases are a more logical um, uh, implementation of, uh, of of those uh, of, of those models. Yeah, because the the model is basically like a giant graph with just lots of information at each node. Um, and the current system you're using to manage these models is based on uh, prior to Mark Logic is based on a relational plus a search technology. Is that right? Yeah. So we're talking about the model management system, which is a uh, which was developed by uh, NASA's JPL and open sourced. Um, it, it uses a, a relational for uh, maintaining uh, the configuration management of different branches of the graph, and then search for storing the act the actual um, artifact. So the in a, in in JSON documents. Okay, got it. So what are what are some of the problems that you have trying to query? I guess what's essentially graph data using relational plus search that made you look for a, a, another alternative. Uh, yeah, so basically the uh, the model is the way it is right now is fairly rigid. Um, it, it's good for uh, for finding uh, documents uh, kind of like in a Google search where you type in a string and it finds documents that um, that contain the string, right? But it's um, it's impossible to query uh, uh, deeply, nested, deeply nested relationships, right? So it, it's you you cannot do uh, searches for uh, pieces of data that are uh, that are connected using sometimes very you know very complex uh, connections. Uh, and that, that seems like that's the crux of the impact analysis, right? Is to find those. Yeah, yeah. So that's challenging. So um, so what what led you to discover Mark Logic and and what how did you how did Mark Logic come into the picture? Yes, I was doing a trade uh, a trade study about two years ago uh, for uh, the right technology to use for this problem, and um, evaluating uh, different um, uh, different databases or maybe extensions to the uh, to the current system. And uh, I was almost done with my trade study when one of my uh, IT colleagues um, mentioned uh, Mark Logic, which was just before uh, the 2018 edition of Mark Logic Word. So I went to the conference, you know, learned more about the tool, build a proof of concept on you know how we could store the data and query it and integrate it with MMS, and that's you know that led us to where where we are today. Um, handed, we handed over the project to IT that productionized it, and uh, and um, uh, we will deliver it in production very soon. Wow, you make you make it sound so easy. You just went to the conference, downloaded it, and built it, right? What was it about? About Mark Logic that that makes it you know um, you know well suited for this problem. Uh, well, you know why did you end up choosing Mark Logic for that? Yeah, so we have uh, we had criteria that we documented for the uh, uh, for the uh, for the trade study that are actually published uh, online that you can find. Um, we were not just looking for the fastest, most scalable. Uh, uh, database. Those are obviously things we want, but those were not the, uh, the main things we were looking for. We are looking for something that's more flexible and uh, that can easily uh, partition the data um, for uh, for for the different branches of the of uh, of the of the of the data, and also something that's you know very flexible enough to incorporate to be incor easily incorporated with the current MMS uh, MMS architecture. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so uh, right now you're in a beta uh, stage with this, right? And um, you know what's next for it? Yes. Yeah, so the beta phase, uh, where you know basically we have users um, to, um, kind of on demand uh, asking access to the technology. Um, so we're doing that for about six months. Uh, at the end of this period, we will, um, uh, you know, potentially uh, make any fixes that are that are needed uh, per the findings of the beta uh, phase, and we're going to go into production. And uh, you know, I'm sure I'm going to find find out about use cases of the technology that I've never even thought about. Yeah, that's great. Actually, we hear that a lot. People like discovering new use cases for their data once they have it made it available to their engineers, right? So yeah, so that'll be exciting. I'm sure. When we hear about those exciting new use cases, you'll come and talk to us at Mark Logic World about them, maybe. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully, 2019, uh, we will not be virtual. <laughs> 21. What am I saying? The 
Yeah. It's 2018. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like one big long day, doesn't it? Um, so uh, are there any other implications for the industry as a whole for, for MBSC? Is this just an, air, an, an, an airline in, or an, an aeronautic and space industry problem or is this? No, right. definitely not. I mean, definitely, uh, you know, aerospace and defense um, are, um, are really the uh, uh, kind of the key um, users of uh, the MBSC technologies. But uh, I think you're going to see more and more um, uh, use, use of that. Uh, we, we've noticed at conferences that um, the, automotive, uh, the automotive industry, which was uh, traditionally absent from systems engineering conferences, started showing up because they're going to be dealing with some very similar issues to, uh, to us with, um, you know, uh, once they move to autonomous driving and they're going to have to uh, provide certification documents to, uh, to, uh, to the government, to their equivalent of, of AA, mm -hmm. this kind of capability will be, uh, will be crucial uh, where, you know, you can basically provide an end-to-end a set of models that, um, um, that that are interconnected, and you know, and when you can update your certification documents almost automatically for every change that you make, that's terrific. All right, well, thanks for sharing that uh, that use case with us. I think it's really interesting, and uh, I hope you're you know doing well and staying safe. Thanks. You too.